This is Lesson 13D, and it's the last lesson for Unit 1 before we move on to measurements. We're going to talk about calculators and percents and using that percent key on a calculator. And of course, I've got links to the previous videos in this description. To solve a percent problem or percent problems on a simple calculator, all the percents need to be changed to decimals. We learned that in Video 11B and decimals back into percents, and we learned that in video 11c. 15% would be equal to 0.15. When the calculator has a percent key, we won't need to change the percent to a decimal because the calculator will do it for us. 20% of $1,800, we would start by putting in a 1800, the multiplication sign, then 2, then 0, and then hit the percent key and equals. And it'll give us the answer. And remember, there may be no percent key on the calculator they lend you for the test, and that you could use the shift equal keys on that Casio 260. Okay? It's a Casio FX260. If that's the one you get, there's no percentage sign. You hit shift equals instead. Okay? So instead of hitting this percent sign, you would hit after the two zero, you would hit shift equals, okay? And remember, any dollar sign that should be on the answer. So if you're doing money, make sure your answer has that dollar sign, okay? So we've been working with this triangle. Part divided by base is going to give us the rate, or part divided by rate is going to give us the base, or base times rate is going to give us the part. If we're solving for the base or the part, if one of those two are missing, it would be like this example. We have 6% of 80. Well, that's the rate. And if it's of 80, that means that's the base. So we need to find the part. What we would do is we have three different choices. The first one is if there is a percent key on our calculator. This one is for the calculator that they usually lend you for the GED test. And this one is for any calculator if we convert it to a decimal first. Okay? So we would... Put in the 8 and then the 0, then the multiplication key. Then we would hit 6 and then just hit the percent key. And it would tell us the answer. It would be 4.8. If we're using the, the Casio FX260 that they usually lend for the GED, you're going to put in 8, 0, multiplication, 6, shift, equals. You can also avoid all the confusion because this works on every calculator. You change this to a decimal by turning it into a 0 0.06, and we multiply 8.0 multiplication key, 0 0.06 equals, and that will give you 4.8, okay? For this one, it says 4.8 is 6% of what number? So now they gave us the 4.8, and now that 80 is missing. I just flipped it around to show you if the base was missing, because on the first one, the part was missing. We would put 4, decimal point 8, division sign, 6, hit the percent key, and equals, and that would tell us 80. This is for the Casio FX260 that they might lend you. You put in 4, then the decimal point, then the 8, then the division sign, then a 6, and then a shift equals. Because remember, the shift equals is the same thing as the percent. And that'll give you an 80. Or you could stick to your old regular way of doing 4, and then decimal point, then 8, then the division sign. And this is converted to a decimal as 0 0.06 and hit equals. And that'll give you 80. I actually like this third way of us converting it to a decimal either in our head or on paper, because that way we don't have to worry about what brand of calculator we've got, okay? If we're solving for the rate, then we're going to do the part divided by the base. And the answer in the display is the percent. We don't move the decimal point. If it says what percent of 60 is 19.5, that means we need to find the rate, and we know the base and the part. As a proportion, we would do 19.5 as the part, 60 as the base. We need to find the rate over 100, 
And you know we would do 19.5 times that 100. Mm -hmm. See? And then we would divide it by the third number, the 60, and then that would give us mm -hmm. the rate. If it's got a percent key, we can hit 19.5 mm -hmm. divided by 60% key equals, and either way, it's going to give us 32.5, which is 32.5%. We just put the percentage sign on. Okay? If you do it as 19 decimal point five divided by 60 equals, you're going to get a 0.325. And in order for it to be a percent, we're going to have to move the decimal point to the right two hops and then put the percentage sign on it to get 32.5%. See? You could also multiply it by 100 and it would come out that way. Because that's basically what we did here. Multiplying it by 100, dividing it by 60. We would just be dividing it by 60 and then multiplying it by 100, see? But we have to be very, very careful about the order that the numbers are entered. We need to do the part divided by the base or the part divided by the rate. You can't put rate and then divide, divide it by part. We don't go upwards. We only divide going downwards to either the base or to the rate. You can't do rate divided by part to equal the base. That That is not what will happen. It will not be equal, okay? So don't do that. When solving to find the base or the rate, we divide and always enter the part first, okay? Enter the part into the calculator first. Now, we did this video in the previous, we did this problem in the previous video, but I'm gonna change it a little bit, okay? We had the ABC company and they had laid off some people. Now the ABC company had 1,200 employees and they hired 5% more. How many new employees did they hire? We need to find 5% of 1,200, don't we? So if your calculator has a percent key, we can just go 1, 2, 0, 0, multiplication key, 5, and hit the percent. And that's going to tell us they hired 60 people. For the calculator they should lend you on the GED, you can put in 1, 2, 0, 0, multiplication sign, 5, shift, equals, and that'll give you 60. Or you could change this 5% to a 0 0.05 as a decimal, and then just put in the 1, 2, 0, 0, multiplication key, decimal point, 0, 0.05 equals, and you'll get a 60. Okay? All right, I got a couple more to show you. In this one... Emma put six and one fourth percent of her monthly salary into a savings account. If she put in $343.75, what's her monthly salary? So this is the part. We know the rate and the part. We just need to find the base. So if we know the rate and the part and the base is missing, then we need to do part divided by rate, don't we? Whatever one is missing, that's what we cover on the triangle, and then we do what it says, part divided by rate. So that means we need to do $343.75 divided by 6 and 1 fourth percent. Now, we can't put in 6 and 1 fourth percent into the calculator. We need to change this. We know 1 fourth is 0.25. So in order to change this, we could say 6.25%, 6.25 and percent sign, or we could change it to 0 0.0625 as a decimal. See? Either way, whichever way we want to enter this or what kind of calculator we're using, we're going to get that she makes $5,500 a month. Okay? So just remember, changing this to a decimal, there is no decimal after the fraction. It's in between the 6 and the 1 fourth. So we move over two hops, we're going to have to put a zero as a placeholder in front of the six, and then that one-fourth turns into a two-five. So it would be 0 0.0625, wouldn't it? And then we could do the division, all right? And when you have a chart, and it says something like November sales were $3,670, and December sales were 4404 and it says December sales were what percent higher than November sales? Well, they want to know what percent higher this is than this. And the first thing we need to do is find the difference. So we do 4,404 minus 3,670, and we get 734. Now, 
We've got the part, we've got the base, we need the rate. We do 734 divided by 3,670, and it's going to equal 0.2. And we know that we can multiply that by 100 to get a 20 for a 20%, or we could just turn this decimal into 0 0.20, which is 20%. Either way, okay? So be very, very careful when you're doing these. Just read the questions very carefully and remember the rules in the triangle. And now you should be ready to do that skill focus on page 151 and do your best. If you have trouble, go back and figure out what you're missing because we're finishing unit one now. You don't want to go into unit two with measurements when you haven't even gotten the percentages and fractions and decimals down, okay? And there's a 30-minute mini test on pages 152 through 155 for lessons 11 through 30. Try to do it in the 30 minutes. See how many you can answer, because that's going to give you a good judge of how many you're going to answer on the GED test. See if you can answer them all. I think there's 25 questions, so you've got around a minute for each question. Then there's the Unit 1 Cumulative Review on pages 156 through 160, and that's going to be a good judge of how you'll do on the GED test, okay? If you get a lot of them right, well, then I'll meet you in Unit 2. If you get a lot of them wrong or you can't answer some of them, then you need to go back and regroup, retreat, regroup, attack again, right? You don't quit. You retreat, regroup, and attack again. You have grit, okay? Our next video is Unit 2. We're going to be doing customary U.S. system of measurements. It's Lesson 14A. And I'm going to have links to these GED math videos that we've done so far to help you out in case you do have trouble. Okay? That'll be where you can get uh, real quick answers to anything that you had problems with in the skill focus page on page 151. These would be the videos to go to to find out what happened and where you went wrong, okay? Okay, we're on to Unit 2 in measurements, and it's going to be regular U.S. customary measurements in that lesson, and there's going to be some metric, and it'll even get into some volume and stuff in Unit 2, okay, and perimeter. I'll see you there. Have a great day. I'm proud of you. Hit the like button if this helped you and share it with somebody that you think could use it, okay? I'll see you next time. Bye.